Okay, students, welcome to the sixth exercise, so square root of a function. So very similar to what we did in exercise five, except the biggest difference here is that most often we're going to actually sketch an original graph and then take the square root of that function. Okay, so it's saying sketch the following graphs on the same Cartesian plane. So we've got two graphs here we need to sketch. We need y equals x plus 2. This is just a line. I hope you guys can recognize that. It's a linear function. Uh, with a slope of 1 over 1 and a y-intercept of 2. So if I want to sketch that graph, it would pass by this point, sl slope of 1, right? So we go down 1, and we go through all these points. I'm going to put it all. And I'll try to give me give you the best line that I can here. All right. So this is y equals x plus 4. Sorry, x plus 2. Okay, so <laughs> that's just a line. That's not a big deal. Now, notice in the second one, we have the square root of x plus 2. So that's basically just taking the square root of that function. Well, you do remember that you can't take the square root of a negative number. And what you're doing here is you're taking the square root of all the y values, because x plus 2 is y, right? So you're taking the square root of all the y values of this graph. So notice that the y values up to a negative infinity there are all negative. Okay, so all these y values are negative, which means when you take the square root of x plus 2, there won't be any value smaller than negative 2. So we know that whenever the y is equal 0, you take the square root, you still get 0. Okay, and now when y is equal to 1, y is equal to 1 right here, right? Well, when you take the square root of 1, you get 1. So that point won't change either. We call those invariant points. Um, they're invariant because the square root of 0 is 0, square root of 1 is 1, so those don't change. Okay, another value that we can uh, take square root of, well, I guess we could take any value. So if we took the square root, the y value here is 2. Well, the square root is 2 is about 1.4. So if I had to guess a point, it'd be about there. Okay, and now the square root of 3, the y value is 3 here, the square root of 3 is 1.7. So the point would go down right about there. And a value we definitely know for sure um, the square root, the value here, y is 4, the square root of 4 is 2. And you have that. Okay, so I don't necessarily need all these points. Okay, but definitely this point, this point, and that point would be probably preferable to have. Now, what happens over this interval right here? Well, I don't know if you've ever taken a square root of a number that's between 0 and 1, but let's take a quick look at it. If I took the square root of 1 quarter, what do I get? one half. Well, what do you notice about those two numbers? This number is smaller than that one. So the square root of a fraction between 0 and 1 gives you something larger. So what happens is over this interval when y, the y values are between 0 and 1, when you take the square root, they actually become bigger. And that's where you get that shape right here. And that's your graph y equals to square root of x plus 2. Okay? So a couple things to note. Okay? The radical has no values when the original graph is negative. So the graph is negative here, no, no values of the graph. There are invariant points when y equals 0 and 1. So you find out when y is equal to 0 and 1. And those are points that are not going to change. And the values of y of the radical function are larger than the original function when y is between 0 and 1. So any time between y is between 0 and 1, any time the graph is anywhere on this part here, the graph should get larger uh, than the original function. Okay, so just a few steps to sketching the graph of y equals square root of x given the graph of y equals x. So a few things you need to do. So cross out the parts where the, gra the graph has y values that are negative. So you'll, net you'll never have any f uh, values there. Okay, place a point where the graph equals y equals 0. That's be your starting point. Those are points where you're going to exist. Um, and that's going to be an invariant point. Another invariant point when y equals 1, so you put those points on there. And then you find other points like we did with 4. You take the square root of 2, square root of 3, square root of 4, and you make a few other points, and then you just connect them in a smooth curve. Okay? So let's take a, few, let's take a look at a few graphs. All right, in the first example here, we're going to take the graph of y equals x squared minus 1. So we're going to sketch this graph to start. So that's just a parabola. I hope you guys recognize that. That's a parabola, and there's a transformation one down. So you take your parabola down by one. So your graph should be 
cross in these three points, right? And we'll add a couple points just to be a little bit more precise. Normally you go 0, 0, you'll have the point 1, 1, and you'd have the point 2, 4, right? Because 2 squared is 4, but then you go down 1, right? So your graph is crossing these points, and this is your parabola. I'll try to sketch it as best as I can. There we go. So this is y equals to x squared minus 1. All right. So now let's take the square root of that function. So really, if you look at it, I'm just taking the square root of that graph. So another way to ask that is I could just simply take, ask this, or I could say y equals square root of f of x. Okay, so it, and considering we would say this is f of x, you'd be taking the square root of this graph. Okay, well, let's go step by step. Where are the y values negative? Well, y values are negative here. So there's going to be no function here. So nothing in between negative 1 and 1. Again, we're looking for y values. Where are the y values equal to 0? Well, the y values are equal to 0 here and here. So those points remain. Where is y equals 1? Next step. Well, y equals 1 here and y equals 1 there. Again, those points will remain. Okay, um, anytime the y value is between 0 and 1, so here and here, so the y between 0 and 1 is here, right? So any point here, the new graph's going to be larger than. So I'm going to go above that. I'm going to go above that. Okay, and just to find a couple more points, the y value is 3 here. So the square root of that is, square root of 3 is 7, 1.7. So you've got about that here on that side. And you're going to have that here on this side. And we're going to continue the curve in a nice smooth way. Sorry, I missed my point there. And continue there. And there's our graph. Kind of ugly in, in general, but that would be the graph of, so in blue, square root of x squared minus 1. Okay? So a couple things to look at in terms of characteristics. The domain of your original function, well, that would be x is the element of all the real numbers because there is no restriction on the variable. However, the domain of your uh, square root function, square root of x squared minus 1, notice that there are no values between negative 1 and 1 because those would be negative inside the square root, so there's nothing there. So we would say, uh, in this case, that uh, let's put it in... Uh, interval notation. So we have between negative infinity and negative 1, and we include negative 1, and between 1 and positive infinity. Okay? And just to invariant points, um, all I'm going to write here is I'm not going to write the coordinates because we can't necessarily give you the coordinates of those points. So we're going to say when y equals 0 and y equals 1. All right. Next example. So sketch the following functions. I'm doing the same thing. Uh, notice the transformations here. Uh, I could rewrite this graph as y equals to negative x squared plus 4. Right, so just to see the transformations a bit better, this is the same thing as that, right? Negative x squared plus 4 plus 4 negative x squared. Um, this would be a reflection over the x-axis, right? And then this would be plus 4 would be a move, shift up. So again, you could do a table of values if you wanted. But the graph does look something like this. So it's, again, you see the reflection and you see the 4 up. And this is what our original graph would look like. So this is y equals negative x squared plus 4. Okay, so now we take the square root function. Again, I don't really need to care about this equation that much because I have the original graph. So, in order, when is y equals 0? y equals 0 here. y equals 0 here. Where is y equal to 1? y is equal to 1. y is equal to 1. Any other values that would be easy to take square root of? Well, we have a y value of 4 here, so you take the square root of 4, you get 2. Notice that the graph will not continue on either one of these sides because it's negative. So you can't take square root of negative. And we're going to connect the whole thing with a nice curve, 
So you don't forget, any time between your 0 and 1, your graph gets larger. Not a lot larger, not, but it does get larger. So you should be above the graph on these two sides. And any time you take the square root of a number larger than 1, the number gets smaller. So that's why we're underneath the curve on this side. Okay, so quickly for domain, again, x is all the elementary reals here. Okay, and over here, well, it's a, between negative 2 and 2. Right? Just looking at the graph, you can tell that. And in varying points, again, I'm just going to say when y equals 0 and y equals 1. Okay, right, last example that's similar to the other two. Uh, just kind of quickly sketch this graph. Uh, so you have x minus 1 squared plus 3. So this is a transformation 1 to the right. This is 3 up. So you have the parabola that starts here. We're going to put these two points here and goes up like this. Okay, so that's your f of x function. Okay, so now, taking the square root of this function, so basically you're just taking the square root of this whole thing, um, what you have to do is, well, look for your y values. Notice that there are no invariant points because there are no places where we cross y equals 0. There are no y equals 1. Those are the invariant points. So all we have here is values that we can take the square root of. So the value of 3 here, you take the square root of 3, you get 1.7. So you're about here. The y values are 4 here. So the y values are 2. And pretty much all we're going to do, you're going to keep going up, and our graph is 2. So honestly, all this graph looks like is a little flatter version of a parabola. Okay? Uh, the domain, again, for this one, x is the element of the reals. For the square root function, notice that there are no negative y values, so x is the element of reals in this one as well. There are no restrictions and no invariant points because, well, y does not equal 0 or 1 anywhere. All right, last example, a little bit different. I didn't give an equation this time. We're not starting with an original function, uh, equation I mean. Uh, we're just going to start with a graph. So let's say this is the graph of our function. And I want to take the square root of this function. Okay? So again, you don't worry about any of the values. You just look at the graph and take it from there. We're going to sketch it directly on this thing. I'll just sketch it in red. So, when are the y values equal to 0? Well, I hope you can tell that there's a y value 0 here, 0 here, and 0 there. Okay? When is y equals 1? So again, those are invariant points, right? y equals 1 over here, y equals 1 over here. Okay, and there's another point we can add here. The y value here is 2, so the square root of 2 is about 1.4. So we're going to put a point right about 1.4. Notice the x values don't change. At x equals 2, it went 2 to 1.4. Okay, and now we just sketch a curve to represent uh, the graph. Notice that these y values are negative. There's going to be no graph there. So we have to go above this and then back down. And then we'd have to go above 0 and 1. Don't forget, any time the y value is between 0 and 1, you go above. And then any time the y value is larger than 1, you go below. So this graph is going to continue there. Perfect. Okay, so the domain of this function, uh, you can, I'm not sure if we can guess this there, but uh, here, this would be negative 2.5 and negative 1.5. So you'd have between negative 2.5, sorry, 2.5 and uh, negative 1.5. And we'd also uh, union this with uh, 0 to 2. Okay, the range, okay, the range, a little different. Um, all the y values, right? So you'd have y values between 0 and 1, and actually you'd go all the way up to square root of 2. Don't forget, that's the exact value here. So the range would be between 0 and square root of 2. All right, hope that uh, that went all right, and we'll talk again in class.